Before that, we enter the world of the modern gumshoe. Private investigators are often perceived as shadowy and controversial characters, but what do they really do? Jake Wallace-Simons has been conducting his own investigation in Crouching Low, Hidden Camera, Life as a P.I. The Harrison Griffiths are one sort of operation, with just two people. And now I'm going to see a different scale of operation. This is Answers Investigations, and they're based near Guildford. Looking at their website on my phone, I can see that they offer a great range of different services. They work internationally as well as domestically, with businesses as well as private individuals. And they employ several employees from a very wide range of backgrounds and experiences. Your destination is located on the left. We are in a rural environment. We're driving into what looks like part of a farm, but it's got several long, low buildings. Certainly this is about as inconspicuous as you could get. It's completely not what I expected, but somehow it sort of makes sense. I'm Andrew Cross, a private investigator for Answers Investigation. So we're in your offices here in uh, just south of Guildford and we're in a back room and I noticed on the way in that there's a sign on the door saying forensics do not enter. Right, yes. It combines as a meeting room and also we do our fingerprinting in here. So sometimes we often have prints that are drying when we've treated the uh, paper items with chemicals. This was clearly a whole new level of technical capability. As it turned out, Andrew also appeared to fulfil a role similar to James Bond's Q, who invented 007's gadgets. He didn't need much prompting to show me some of his favourites. I've got a bit of an engineering background and I quite enjoy putting cameras into different things. So depending on what job we have, I will go and create a system for that job. So just describe what you've got here. OK, this is a standard Costa coffee cup. What I've done with it is... Uh, in here we have a very small camera, about two inches long. Um, you've got a memory card inside there. And obviously you can see the hole is probably only about three millimetres. You just drill it through. You power it on and then you can put it in this cup. I've actually weighted the cup down with some batteries in the bottom there. Very basic. You fit the lid on. You generally hold it like that. So you've got your aiming mark there so you know where you're pointing it roughly. That's nice and solid. We do find that the Costa Cups are very good, but also they're probably the, one of the most commonly seen ones. So you can walk down the road perhaps with a, a camera in a cup. You know, nobody really looks twice at a cup. Then he crossed the room, opened a metal grill, and took some things from a cupboard. When he returned to the table, he laid out a range of random everyday objects with a twist. OK, this one, uh, same sort of principle. Standard pizza boxes from an unbranded company. That's the one I've converted there. So it's the second box down. Pop the camera in, put a little bit of tape over it. And we also have a red polo shirt and a cap. The idea is, is that um, if you want to find out who's opening the door at a particular address, you'd maybe go and get a fresh pizza to put in this box so that you've got a, a genuine smell of pizza. You turn up at the address... Is this number 42? Well, it's blatantly not. Hopefully then you get a bit of rapport with the person behind the door. Maybe it's someone who's not supposed to be residing at the address. You'd make your excuses and apologise for being so stupid and go off. Same principle, just adapting everyday items to be able to hide a small camera. Andrew agreed to take me on what he called a ride-along. We went bouncing off along the country lanes in the direction of a nearby town, armed with a state-of-the-art camera. Our mission? It was complicated and confidential, but basically we had to establish whether a car, a Land Rover, was still parked outside a house. Very, very basic today. It's, it's a difficult spot to sit and watch for a long time, as you'll see, because there's only about three or four houses down the road, and um, 
there's nowhere really to sit in the vehicle, so it'll involve a, a quick drive past and um, a photograph of the vehicle on the drive. And this is where the subject lives? Not far away, yeah, not too far away. And do you know that he's at this address, or you just suspect he's in? We've, we've seen the vehicle there, and we believe it's been driven by one of his family members. That's there. So there was a Land Rover there? Yes. And you captured that on, on camera? Yes. And that was very quick. I mean, you drove by, whipped the camera out, took some pictures, yeah. turned around and off. Yes, yeah. Now, weren't you worried that as you drove past and got your camera out, that you know somebody might be coming out the door or happened to be looking out the window and see you doing it? They'd have to be very quick. I mean, generally with these sorts of cameras, um, because they're so fast, you can just generally just take a few snaps. Of them. But that was a very, very quick job. It just proves that that vehicle is still there. So what I'll do later is I'll ring the client and we'll discuss a plan. Back in the office, while Andrew analysed the pictures, I talked to his boss, Nigel Parsons, about ethics. One of the problems with this industry, it is unregulated. Probably 90% of the people in it leave an awful lot to be desired. And within that, I'd say there is a hard call. I know of a number of people who would happily go and bribe people for medical reports. Would happily go and bribe people to obtain details of somebody's mobile phone records or their bank accounts. The lack of licensing is an invitation, and it's an invitation to do some pretty reprehensible things. There's a wonderful 10% who are just morally right, ethically right, and legally right. Licensing will hopefully eradicate the bad element that's in there. Everything that we do is morally right. We try to ensure it's ethically right and it's certainly legal. It's no benefit to our clients to go through any illegal path. Nigel was a sinewy, intense man who never seemed to stay still. As we talked, he was mainlining coffee. He said he'd been up until two the night before, working on a job. We get involved in so many different things, such a broad range from tracing to surveillance to employee issues to computer forensics. And every day is completely different. If we've got a plan at nine o'clock in the morning, it's gone out the window by half past ten. Largely just because things change so quickly. And how many people work from this office here? Here we number about seven or eight, and then about the same number of part-timers, a couple of specialists, things like computer forensics. I think our youngest is 16, our oldest is pushing 60, and everybody in between. Loads of different backgrounds, which has got tremendous advantages to it. People with backgrounds in engineering, straight out of education, backgrounds in accountancy, banking. He recommended that I speak to his latest recruit to get her impressions of the business. I'm Olivia Ellinger and I'm working as a private investigator. I've worked here for two weeks now, this is my second week. Do you mind if I ask how old you are? I'm 20. And how's it going? So far so good, been really busy. Um, my first day, straight in at the deep end for my first uh, assignment, which was really, really fun. It was a... something going on in Winchester where we had to follow a woman around and got the information we needed, which is good. And what do your friends and family think about your new occupation? Um, originally, they all thought it was a bit of a joke, because <laughs> they didn't believe me. They're like, oh, you're not doing that. That's not true. But then, obviously, now they've realised that I actually am. They all want to know what's going on. Just are people wanting to know so much, and they find it very funny. They call me, like, Olivia the Spy. <laughs> Olivia the Spy. Sounds more like a character from a comic than a real-life P.I. But then, as I was discovering, many things in this industry are rather unexpected. Crouching low, hidden camera, life as a P.I. was presented by Jake Wallace-Simons and produced by Martin Rosenbaum. This programme's our Documentary of the Week. For more details, go to the Radio 4 website.